I wanted to make this video to show you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of some of my personal paintings to give you more insight about my 2D process, about the different steps I go through when I create a painting and how I think and image and really what thinking and brainstorming I go through to create a powerful composition and to create interesting storytelling. So let's start first with this one. As I mentioned in the lesson one about finding inspiration, I very often find my inspiration from a photography. This was the photo that inspired me this painting. I really loved the contrast in that photo between the very bright red of the sand and the dark gray background. There was a contrast in both value and saturation and I really loved that. I thought it could make a really interesting painting. So what I did, I started to paint over from that very photo and I quickly photobashed some dirty photos to put my idea on the paper. So we have a submarine creating an interesting perspective because it leads to the two astronauts here. So I thought it would be nice to have a very diagonal composition created by the submarine going out of frame to show how big it can be. It's so big it goes out of the frame and, and there would be maybe, I, I was thinking about uh, adding more wrecks in the background to show that it's a, a whole symmetry of uh, wrecks like that. So from that point, I decided that I liked the composition. So I started uh, replacing the element with uh, better photos and detailing everything. But at this point, um, I found myself a bit stuck because if I still added my two characters here, um, I thought it wasn't very good for storytelling to have them in the middle of the sand like that. It, it would be more interesting to have them um, already exploring the submarine here. But then they would be in the center of the composition and then nothing would happen on the left. So I wasn't quite happy with uh, the current composition. So I thought it really needed a foreground. So I added a foreground with a character and its rover because before it was only light and it was too, uh, too present, too eye-catching and we were losing the character. So why I added uh, the foreground in shadow, it was to really uh, play with light and shadow and only keep this ray of light. I think it really helps the composition because it creates all those lines pointing toward um, our character. So we have the lines created by the light and also the lines created by the mountain and the um, shape of the hull of the submarine. And the idea here is really to use the elements of your image to lead the eye to your focal point. And then from that point, um, it was only about detailing. So I added some uh, dust to create more atmosphere and blend, uh, blend the rover a bit more and to detach also the character from the background. So it's really playing with um, uh, the elements to create storytelling as well. I really wanted to convey mystery in this painting, to question the spectator, like, why is there a submarine crashed in a desert like that? Where does it take place? Or when, maybe? Is it Mars? Is it Earth or another planet? What happened there? So that's something I really like doing when I uh, make a painting is to create storytelling within the image. There is no action. It's just the three elements, which are the break, the two astronauts and the red desert together that creates the story. I did the same with the forest painting with my dinosaurs by adding melting ice to the forest. I want you to tell the story that this forest uh, freezes in winter and Every spring, all the ice melts and floods the forest and we see some uh, remains of ice and all the little creatures that live in the forest, they start to wake up and uh, do their life. It's really the combination of the flood, the ice and the forest that creates a story. I really like to create storytelling through the landscape like that with no action whatsoever, just from the elements present in the landscape. Then for this one, it's the same story, really. Uh, it's a photo that inspired me in painting, this photo. I don't know why, but I really liked the contrast in those cliffs, the contrast between um, the dark of 
those patches here and uh, really bright cliffs. It reminded me some ice cliffs. So I wanted to create another sci-fi scene in an icy landscape this time. I didn't really know where I was going at this point, but I just tried things. So because it reminded me some ice, I started to create an icy landscape, extending the composition and adding some sky and some water and ice on the foreground and adding more shapes to continue the rhythm of the cliff. I had this idea that maybe um, I could illustrate how it would look if we decided to terraform uh, Europa. Europa is one of um, Jupiter's moon, which is all covered by ice with uh, liquid water underneath. And I thought it could be interesting to imagine maybe in the distant future the terraformation of this planet with big machines and something very industrial. So that was the next step. I started adding the um, buildings and the machines that they would use for terraforming the planet. Again, I played with every element to really lead the eye to my center of interest, which was those machines, because that's what the image is all about, the terraformation of the planet. So first I used the diagonal of the cliffs to lead the eye toward the buildings, and I created rhythm and contrast in the buildings to really draw the attention to this area. I also played with the shape and direction of the smoke and the spaceship coming. For me, the spaceship was secondary. It's really just there to add scale and life into the painting. And also I played with the rhythm of the ice flow. The rhythm is much more dense in the background and, and less in the foreground here. And from that point, it's all about refining and detailing. And I added those big structures in the background to have a hint of how massive those uh, towers can be and they are half hidden in the mist and in the clouds so you don't really see the actual size of those and it creates some mystery, you know. And for this one, I was inspired from a photo, this one. Uh, I really liked, um, I don't know, the mood in this image and the rhythm created by the water uh, rivers. And I liked the contrast between the green grass and the gray rocks. There was something a bit mysterious about it, so... At this point, I had no idea whatsoever what I was going to paint. I was imagining like a valley of some weird rock shapes. So I just took the image and started painting over it. Very roughly, it's very dirty, but just to have an idea of composition. And when I was happy about it, I started to refine it with photos. And I thought that to the, um, those rocks, especially this one, it kind of reminded me, I don't know why, um, like big tree trunk because of the texture of it and I thought oh it would be super cool to have really massive uh, dead trees that would be fossilized so I started replacing my rocks with uh, dead trees and really playing the integration so that it looks like the trees are made from the same um, from the same material as the rocks feel that those trees are really integrated in the environment and they are there since so long that this fossilized into rock. The bark of the tree really blends with the rock and the moss. And then again, I refined it a bit more. I removed the trunk on the left because it was too distracting. And I liked it, but I thought it was lacking some scale reference. I really wanted to show how big those trees were, but Without normal trees to compare, it's hard to really uh, show the scale of it. So what I did, I started adding more trees around to really show how big those trees must have been before. So we have some dead one. I added some dead one in the water to create a bit more rhythm and some more on the left. And also some flying creatures to bring more life and help with scale. And also for the story, I wanted to show that uh, this tree is... Um, really growing from the remains of the big one and it's much taller than the, all the other ones. So I wanted to question the viewer about it. Is it an offspring of those big trees? Is it going to grow uh, so big? I like the idea that even though all those giant trees are dead, maybe yeah, a seed survived and it's starting to grow again from the remains of the old one. I really like the, the, this idea. And then I did the last pass, mostly to add more atmosphere and give more depth. 
that's really my uh, common process for 2D paintings, starting from a reference photo and playing around it. Sometimes I have a precise idea of what I'm going to do from the beginning, but sometimes I'm just going with the flow and playing with composition and then the ideas come uh, along the way. And I find that very interesting to let the creative flow guide you in a way. Mm -hmm. 